One of the wonderful things about being a park ranger is that you never know what's going to come through your door from day to day. Hi, my name is Dennis Fry. I worked for 20 years as the chief historian at Harpers Ferry National Historical Park. But I was born here in the Antietam Valley. My family's lived here in the Antietam Valley for 250 years. And in fact, my ancestors, the Poffenberger family, actually owned property on the battlefield where the battle was fought. When people ask me if I had ancestors involved in the Civil War, I say, yeah, the battle was fought on the ground they owned. Well, I'm standing now on ground here at Antietam, about uh, 200 yards from the famous Bloody Lane and the tower at the Bloody Lane. And I'm here today to speak not as a historian at Harpers Ferry, but as a historian in Antietam. It's 1987, 1987. I was really young in 1987. And I had gone to Cleveland to speak to the Cleveland Civil War Roundtable. And the night after I was finished, that morning, uh, one of the members there came and asked if he could enjoy breakfast with me at the airport. So we're having breakfast together. And while we're enjoying breakfast, he says to me, Hey, I've been out on the Antietam battlefield. I've been doing a lot of metal detecting. And I'm finding a lot of stuff. And I said, Metal detecting? What are you doing metal detecting on the battlefield? Don't you know that's illegal? You can't do that. He said, Oh, no problem. I'm on private property. And indeed he was. He was on the private property of the Miller family that owned what was the roulette farm, the roulette farm which borders the Bloody Lane. This is the farm where most of the Union Army attacked the Bloody Lane on September 17th, that morning and that afternoon. So it was all private property. He had permission to do metal detecting here. So he tells me about finding one evening, getting close to dark, the mother load. His metal detector is going crazy. All kinds of things that he's discovering. And he was located near a rock break. And as he's excavating, he's finding 69 caliber material. He's finding buck and ball, which indicates probably Irish Brigade. He's in the vicinity of where the Irish Brigade fought and where the Irish Brigade advanced. And then he starts to find things that indicate that it's New York. It's the New York buttons, maybe even a New York buckle. And he's thinking, oh yeah, this has got to be, this has got to be Irish Brigade, boys. They must have dropped this stuff here or dumped this stuff here as they were preparing to go into battle or as they were coming off the field. So again, it's getting darker and darker. And as he's excavating, all of a sudden he discovers something that makes him pause. He found a crucifix, a crucifix. And the first thing he says is Irish Catholics crucifix. Oh yeah, that all makes sense. But he, he says, you know, uh, why would anybody leave their crucifix behind? That doesn't, that doesn't compute. But he continues to excavate and then all of a sudden he stops and he's alarmed. He's alarmed. He finds something his metal detector didn't detect, rosary beads, rosary beads. Now no one would leave their rosary beads and their crucifix behind as they're going into battle, not an Irish Catholic. And so he begins to, in almost darkness now, looking around and he discovers human remains. He has human remains of Civil War soldiers. He's been excavating in a grave right here, right at this location in 19, mid-1980s. Well, he stops, he gathers everything up, and that begins what happens next. I, with the National Park Service, was able to uh, contact uh, Dr. Stephen Potter, chief archaeologist for the National Capital Region of the Park Service, a good friend of mine. We'd worked closely together on many projects already, and Stephen and I together organized this excavation and Stephen also brought in the Smithsonian and Doug Owsley, famous anthropologist and forensic anthropologist of the Smithsonian, so that we work collectively together, the Park Service and the Smithsonian, to excavate right here. Because I believe when George stopped, the guy that found this, when he stopped, I thought, you know something, I'll bet there's more that's still there that we haven't found. And sure enough, there was. Lots more. Now, interesting enough, when we were excavating, and this is done by professional archaeologists, when we were excavating here, we, didn't, we were surprised at what we did not find, what we didn't find. We found no skulls, no skulls, and no long bones, no, no long bones, no legs, no arm bones. That, that was all gone. And, and we figured out why. We understood at that point that this grave was not disturbed, this grave had been previously excavated. These men had been discovered when they were establishing the Antietam National Cemetery. 
and the long bones and skulls were removed. That's what you needed to do. You didn't need to take the whole body. Skulls, long bones, that's the body. So they had already gone to the National Cemetery. We didn't know who they were. We knew these were New York boys and we knew they were Irish Brigade, but we didn't know anything else. But we still found a lot. We found hand fragments, bones of the fingers and the hand. And we found foot fragments. We found one foot with a boot, a leather boot still attached. And we also found fragments of the chest cavity that were left behind, badly deteriorated, and of course collapsed. But it was absolutely rib cage. And I'll never forget, we were excavating in one area, and all of a sudden the trowel went ding. And of course, that meant metal on metal. And you stop at that point because you want to investigate what do you have. And so we brought out the brushes and we started to brush. And we saw something. You don't want to see. Inside the chest cavity of this dead soldier. There was the kill bullet. There it was. Smashed in his central cavity. We're looking at the missile of death that was fired by a Confederate soldier at this Irishman on September 17, 1862. That's what killed him. There it is, right there. As you can imagine, we're all in stunned silence. And we, we brushed a bit more. And this is what was even more amazing. Within about three inches of the original bullet inside the chest cavity, we found two more flattened bullets. This man was struck impacted by three Confederate missiles almost simultaneously in his chest cavity. Close range, bloody lane, a fire, down he went. He didn't feel anything. His body retained all three of those bullets. And there they were. Now, anyone who knows anything about archaeology, you know, archaeology in itself is a destructive science. You have to remove the evidence to find additional evidence. But you document, you record everything, everything. And so we documented this, we recorded it, but we weren't done yet. We had more work to do. And all of a sudden, I felt about a dozen people in a circle around me looking at me. Nobody speaking a word, but I felt their stares. I knew what they were saying. You remove that bullet. So I got down on my knees beside this, the remains of this Irishman, killed on September the 17th, near the Bloody Lane. And I took my fingers, my hand, and I slowly went down into the ground and removed a smash bullet from his chest. You can't get any closer to the Civil War.